In this video, I'm going to show how we lose the frontal plane and then how we get the frontal plane back. And what you're going to notice is that it requires building a foundation. I think of it as driving a stake down the left side of the body because the left side of the body is all opened up and kind of floating away. So what probably happens is this. The first thing is because of the rightward shift of our body due to how we're arranged and our, neurolog and our neurological function, our, the left side of our pelvis falls forward. Now, it's not going to do it quite so dramatically, obviously, but I'm just accentuating the movement to show what's going on. It falls forward, okay? Our weight shifts forward on the left side. Now, when that happens, the left side falls forward. Our, our pelvis orients to the right. In order to stay straight, we have to rotate our torso back to the center. So watch what happens to my ribs on the left. Boom. That's frontal plane that you just lost. All right. Your frontal plane over here, you're tight on the right side, but the left side, you've lost that frontal plane. And now my head is on an angle. So my head is going to, my neck, I'm sorry, is going to side bend and rotate back to the center. You've also lost frontal plane in the neck because you're going to be restricted in this position. I know it looks like you probably should be restricted to the left, but because of the way the cervical neck works, you're going to be restricted to the right. So to get that back, all right, so here we are. This is a very exaggerated position. We have to pull the left pelvis back via activation of the left hamstring. So here we pull it back and exhalation drives the left ribs down and you've just restored frontal plane position in this area of the pelvis and the ribs, which we call the zone of apposition or it is called the zone of apposition. So this is the left ZOA. You restore that first through left hamstring to reposition the pelvis, exhalation to get the ribs to come down. Now you've restored that frontal plane motion. Now at the neck, we often have to turn off the right sternocleidomastoid, which is holding your neck in this position, but that can also be done by the left ZOA. You get that back, now the neck comes back up straight. This SCM can relax. Now your breathing can normalize because you've got left diaphragm function. So the right SCM and the right scalenes no longer have to kick in to help get air in. And that is how you can restore frontal plane position with just one exercise like the uh, supine 90-90 with uh, the hip shift, the one that I've documented before. So that's how you can also affect someone's bite, because their jaw, where their jaw is positioned, just through that one exercise. Because everything, you just drove a stake down the left side. So here you are, left side is floating away, it's open, the right side is compact. Through that left hamstring and left abs, we drive a stake down. And then you have to stabilize that left side. So when you're on your left foot, you can be in this position and then you can go to the right and go to the left without losing that position. And that's how, in a nutshell, you can restore frontal plane position of a pelvis, rib cage, and neck with just one exercise.